Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So I want to talk about a very important topic in relation to one meal a day, and that is the number one reason that I have found from the people that I have helped and coached around the world time and time again, the number one reason for them failing when trying to stick to one meal a day long term. And the reason why I want to make this video is because I want you to succeed on one meal a day because so many people want to get on the one meal a day journey but they just find it very hard to sustain long term and actually have an abundance of energy whilst in that intermittent fasting state with one meal a day and have the optimal hormonal production and cognitive function and all these other amazing benefits that come from eating one meal a day. And obviously a lot of people get on one meal a day for the weight loss benefits and I have found that it is the ultimate weight loss hack out there. It actually allowed me to drop my body fat percentage even lower when I was already super super ripped and I used to eat two meals a day and I managed to lose around 2.5 kilos of additional body fat within just one month and yeah to lose that amount when you're already a super low body fat goes show that it's really really good for the weight loss results and if you want to learn more about why it's the ultimate weight loss hack more than what I talk about in this video. I put a link for a video up above that talks about that more in depth. So what is the number one reason that I see time and time again for people failing on eating one meal a day long term? And I have talked about this many times in videos before and that number one reason is under eating. Which a lot of people, when they get on the one meal a day diet journey, they want to do some extreme calorie restriction which is just not giving their body enough fuel from the food that they're eating and also enough micro and macro nutrients. So then you will not feel amazing with eating one meal a day and get the full benefits from it and being able to sustain it long term. Because when you are not eating enough calories and you're eating one meal a day, what a lot of people find is that their cravings start to get out of control. They feel hungry so many times throughout the day, even when they've been doing one meal a day for consecutive days in a row. And it is the body going, we are not getting enough fuel from the food sources we're eating when you're eating your one meal a day. So it will give you intense cravings to try and get you to eat anything possible. And it's gonna give you really intense cravings, more specifically for very calorie dense foods. And it is a good, Thing that the body is doing that because if you are under eating consecutively long term it's going to have serious detrimental effects on your hormonal production your mental health and your physical health holistically so this is not the direction that you want to go in and yes eating a lot less calories will speed up weight loss results but also it is a massive massive thing that can send you in the direction of failing on one meal a day and actually rebounding and doing like this yo-yo type of diet where you're restricting and then your cravings overcome you and then you go and eat loads of food and you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth so you lose weight, you gain weight and it's just not something that you can sustain long term. And what I can say from my own personal experience, the times that I've eaten not a lot of calories at all and I mean relatively a low amount of calories when eating one meal a day, when I'm fasting, to the next day for around 23 hours and to the next meal, I find my energy levels are not so good. My mood is unstable. I just don't have optimal cognitive function. I get more hungry throughout the day. I'm more apathetic and my sex drive is lower and it just has so many far reaching negative unwanted effects that yeah, it's just something that you need to be very, very aware of because when I've experienced this with massively under eating with one meal a day, it's just not helping me be the best version of myself. It's not optimizing my productivity. It's not optimizing my energy levels. It's having an effect on my training that I do with calisthenics consistently. And it's just a recipe for disaster. And one thing I want to mention is I stated in a video that I am now doing calorie restricting with eating one meal a day. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link for it up above. But there's a difference between extreme calorie restriction and eating enough calories, but where it might be just slightly under and you can sustain that long term, at least from what I've experienced and from what I have found from a lot of people that I've spoken to that have been doing one meal a day long term and people that I've helped and coached around the world with succeeding on one meal a day. 
So there's a fine line between not eating enough and just eating enough food to sustain your body and your mind so you can feel the best whilst in that intermittent fasting state and get the full benefits from eating one meal a day. So you may be thinking, well, what is the difference between the two, like the calorie intake? So for me, I will use myself as an example. When I'm doing just like some moderate calorie restriction, I'm eating around 1,500 calories or so a day. But when it's extreme calorie restriction, it starts to go down a lot lower than that. Say, yeah, around 1,200 calories, 1,300, 1,000 or even less, then yeah, it's just not gonna work for me. So around 1,500 calories or so, I find even with being very active and training almost every single day and being a very busy entrepreneur, that I get the greatest benefits from eating one meal a day. I did used to in the past, and you would have seen in many of my What Eat In A Day In A Mukbang videos, and if you haven't seen them, I put a link for a playlist up above that shows you all the different types of foods that I've ate at restaurants when eating out, is that yes, I used to eat loads and loads and loads and loads of calories, around three to 4,000. But what I knew when embarking on this one meal a day diet journey, that I would need a lot more calories when first starting out. And then I knew that over time that I would, well, I thought that I would go in the direction of feeling a natural desire and less of a need to consume as many calories. So what has happened, over a six month period, I was eating loads and loads of calories, around three, 4,000, and then I felt the natural desire to start eating less. So I started experimenting with it and it started working better for me. And I just started noticing greater benefits with my mind and body holistically whilst in that intermittent fasting state and we're doing one meal a day. And I'm someone that always keeps my mind open and is always experimenting and evolving. And there's times where I will try something that doesn't work so I don't do it and I don't stick to it very long if it's not working and then I try something else and yeah it's just something that i love to do and it's brilliant that i do that so then i can share it with all of you lovely people so you can learn something from my own personal experience and maybe something beneficial that can help you on your own journey so what i say is if you're new to eat one meal a day or you're someone that has been trying it for a while and you find it hard to sustain long term eat enough calories where you feel completely full and satiated and a lot of people are not used to feeling so full when eating so many calories in one sitting and a lot of people say they're bloated but in most cases they're not bloated you are just full and your body will start to break down that food and digest it but some people do have issues where they are eating a lot of calories within one sitting and it just seems to sit in their stomach for ages and there's some people that wake up in the morning their stomach still feels full and it's still sticking out and yeah it just feels that the body is not actually digested the food effectively and fully which yeah if you're someone that has got that issue then you need to address the underlying root cause of your digestive issues because i don't have that issue within about a couple of hours after i've eaten my one meal a day even with thousands of calories it's left my stomach and my body's digesting it and i go to bed like buddha where my belly's like sticking out completely and i can't even do it that much because i ain't got no food in there at the moment and then I wake up like Gandhi, where my stomach is completely flat. So if you're someone that's not waking up like that when I wake up in the morning, then yeah, the things that could be causing those issues with digestion is low stomach acid production. You also might not have optimal gut flora. You might not be chewing your food very effectively. You may be drinking liquids with your food. Do not do that. It dilutes your stomach acid. You may have nutritional deficiencies, which have a negative effect on your digestion so you want to be resolving the underlying root cause of the issue and not blaming the one meal a day where you're eating a bunch of calories for causing that issue and i'm someone that's worked on my digestion for years and years and years so that's why i have optimal digestion so what i would recommend in that situation is doing the certain things that i've mentioned to resolve the digestive issues with like chewing your food enough avoiding water and the thing with low stomach acid production and gut flora if you haven't got optimal gut flora you need to be taking a high quality probiotic to re-establish beneficial bacteria in the gut so you can have optimal digestion and assimilation of food and also the issues with stomach acid production and other digestive issues are normally linked to nutritional deficiencies so you want to be making sure with one meal day and i've stated this in other videos that you are taking certain supplements so you can make sure you're getting the broadest spectrum of micronutrients because you cannot rely on your diet alone to give you all the micronutrients. And so many people are so chronically deficient and then it causes so many issues holistically. 
So yeah, what I would recommend is taking a high quality multivitamin. A lot of them are garbage on the market. They do not contain the most bioavailable form of each nutrient. And what bioavailable means it is very easily absorbable and assimilatable by your body. A lot of them contain toxic substances. A lot of them contain very low doses of each nutrient. So it's not gonna correct nutritional deficiencies. And there's a lot of other factors that will stop a lot of supplements not actually giving the benefits that you're looking for. So what I would do is put a link down below for the most highest quality multi-nutrient supplement in the world and I recommend taking three to six of these capsules with your one meal a day. And also you wanna be making sure that you're taking a high quality EPA and DHA supplement, which I put a link down below to optimize your digestion and your hormonal production. and yeah, what I say is with all these supplements, it's also going to give you a whole host of benefits mentally and physically, holistically as well. So yeah, for the EPA and DHA and the multivitamin and the probiotic, and what I say is take the probiotic in the fastest state. Make sure you take the EPA and DHA two to three capsules with your one meal a day because you need to be making sure with the multi and EPA and DHA you're taking it with food because it will maximize the absorption when consuming them. And there will be links down below for UK, US and worldwide suppliers. And these are the best supplements on the market for these specific kinds that I am sharing with you in this video. So now back on something that I was going to mention is when you're first starting out, yes, eat as many calories as you possibly can. Be very full and satiated. And then what you can do over time, as your body becomes more fat adapted, because when you first start out with daily intermittent fasting, your body's not so efficient at burning your own body fat as fuel. And over time, it just starts to become more efficient with doing that, which then makes intermittent fasting daily easier. And as your body in just a holistic way starts to become more used to fasting and your ghrelin production starts to go down, which ghrelin is a hunger hormone, which gives you that grumbling noises. It can give you hunger pains, stomach pains, as some people would call they start to vanish after about a two week period of intermittent fasting on a regular basis which makes it so much easier to daily intermittent fast and sustain it long term so yeah as you start to get further in your journey you can start to then decrease your calorie intake well at least try it and be mindful and don't cut too many calories too quickly and just be very mindful of how it's affecting you see if it's actually making you feel better or worse if it's making you feel worse stop doing it if it's making you feel better then stick to that, stick to the calorie intake that you've dropped down to for a while and then if you want to drop less then you can do that. But it's all about being slow and steady. It's like the story of the tortoise and the hare, slow and steady wins the race. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions for me, as always, please leave them down below. I love answering your questions. I try and get back to them as soon as possible. Be aware I get so many, so it may take me a while to get back to yours and if you like the video like it down below give us a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone you think needs to learn about the number one reason that i have found that so many people fail on eating one meal a day and if you haven't already click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more one meal a day informational videos for me on a regular basis intermittent fasting videos calisthenics workout and progression videos also videos talking about my own journey with one meal a day and calisthenics what in a day videos what i do in a day videos and all different types of videos to educate you on many different things to help you go in the direction of gaining and maintaining the body side the fitness levels and the energy levels and i also hope with my videos that they also inspire you and motivate yourself to push yourself towards those things and actually be disciplined and consistent to actually gain and maintain them long term so yeah, if those type of videos sound good to you, make sure you click that subscribe button and you click that bell notification button next to the subscribe button. It's very key, otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. So if you want to be notified, make sure that you do click that bell notification button. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.